What's the difference between these two, uh, between these two schemes? And which one of these will use lower pump energy? Is there some comparative advantage of one over the other? Shabash, this four level laser system will require lower pump, lower pump energy. The reason is that you have lasing operation between C and D and the lower of these lasing states, D, is not a ground state. Therefore, it is far easier to achieve population inversion between C and D than achieving population inversion between C and A because A is a ground state and there's a high preponderance or a high population of electrons in the state A. So at least you have to move almost half of the electrons in the state A from the state A to higher state before you can achieve population inversion. But here, even the population inversion is readily achieved because this is not the ground state. To start off with, this state had a lower population of electrons. Agreed? as compared to the ground state, G. Sir, so there are two modes of operation. <clears throat> it's a very good question. Very good question. There are two modes of operation of lasers. One is you continuously pump energy. Second is you pulse the pump. You give the pump stop. Give the pump stop. Now different laser schemes have different requirements. In this configuration it is easier to have a continuous pump because the pump energy required is smaller. If you want continuous operation in this Ruby system, in this three level system, it requires a far greater pump energy. And it might not become very cheap or efficient to input that energy. Therefore, this kind of scheme generally works in the pulsed mode. You pump, switch off, and you get a pulse of light, no light. Pulse of light, no light. Pulse of light, no light. So this generally operates in the pulsed mode, whereas it is easier to operate this in the continuous mode. So there are different modes of operation, right? So any questions up to so far? So you have, for example, you have this state populated. The question the student is asking is how do you initiate the laser operation? Where does it all start from? It all starts from spontaneous emission of an electron from the state C to D. Now, this is a metastable state, has a lifetime of a millisecond. So on the average, you have to wait a millisecond for a, an for a photon to be emitted by spontaneous emission. So the, the warm-up period would be about, on the average, a millisecond. So the lifetime is not uh, 100 billion years. It's a few milliseconds. So on that order, you can expect spontaneous emission to take place. So that becomes the seed, which initiates the stimulated emission process.
There is no difference. ये तो देखें लफ्जों का उलझाओ लफ्जों का उलट फेर है हम कह सकते हैं एटम्स एक्साइट हो रहे हैं हम कह सकते हैं इलेक्ट्रॉन एक्साइट हो रहे हैं दिस नो डिफरेंस देखो ये मैं कह रहा हूँ सीमेंटिक है लफ्जों की ये खेल है इफ एन इलेक्ट्रॉन गोज टू द हायर स्टेट The atom is also excited. All right, fine. All right. So in these, ruby is not a simple system. It does not have three levels. Neon does not have th four levels. There are many levels. My, our students know this, but we just looking at the desired levels. There can be one atom in which there are multiple lasing transitions. For example, neodymium in. in jag neodymium the neodymium ion can have multiple laser transitions there are multiple energy levels which can laze so be, saying whether an atom is excited or an electron is excited is not the same thing on average कोई ना कोई डिले होगा मैं वन मिली सेकेंड तो नहीं कह सकता देर हैज टू बी सम डिले इट्स वेरी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड इट्स नॉट इट्स गोइंग बी वेरी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड हाउ हाउ मच द डिले इज देर विल बी सम डिले एंड नाउ आई कैन नॉट कमेंट हाउ लॉन्ग दैट डिले विल बी एंड वॉट डज इट डिपेंड अपॉन इट्स अ वेरी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड प्रोसेस अच्छा जी ये मैंने बताया ना एंगल मोमेंटम सिलेक्शन रूल्स हैं जो बाज ट्रांजिशन को फॉरबिड करते हैं देखो देर आर थ्री और फोर एंगल मोमेंटम सिलेक्शन रूल्स ट्रांजिशन कैन ओबे ऑल ऑफ दैम बट इट कैन वायोलेट अ फ्यू ऑफ दैम इफ इट वायोलेट्स अ फ्यू ऑफ दैम इट हैज अ लॉन्गर लाइफ टाइम इफ इट वायोलेट्स a large number of them it will have an even longer lifetime so one has to take into account the angular momentum selection rules and they determine what the lifetime is yes we are talking about electron dipole transitions only there are other transitions as well but the probability is very low extremely low so the uh, uh, magnetic dipole transitions are about 1% of the electric dipole transitions the electric quadrupole transitions are 0.01% so there are other transitions as well but the probability is very low the protons are taken from the c to a uh, will have more energy than c to b yes so inevitably if you have this state populated and the transition is possible from state c to a there will also be an emission of radiation of this wavelength acha how many of you are physics students here or physicists or most of all right so one question i would like to raise go these photons are they fermions or bosons they are bosons now we all know that bosons have a particular behavior now the photons that are emitted in the laser let's draw a schematic diagram of a laser <coughs> you have two mirrors m1 M2 and in between M1 and M2 we have what is called a cavity we call it a cavity or a resonator 
Remember, lasers were first made by electrical engineers. So that gives some solace to the electrical engineers. Now, therefore, most of the terms that are used in laser technology, they come from electrical engineering. So in between these mirrors, there is a cavity or a resonator. Just like we have two fixed supports, and in between these supports, there is a string. A simple example, there's a string. And you can make standing waves in the string of different frequencies, but fixed frequencies. We all know that. The, stand, the frequencies of the standing waves are fixed. So this is like a resonator. There are normal modes of this string, which means that lambda has to be, uh, what's the relation? L has to fit m times lambda over 2. So this is the condition for standing waves, where m is an integer. Now exactly using the same analogy, how does a laser work? A laser works by having two mirrors, and there is a cavity in between, called a cavity or a resonator, of length L. Of length L. But inside this cavity, we need to place a light amplifier. And the light amplifier is simply the atoms out of which we want to make lasing action possible. So in between this cavity, inside this cavity, we place some light amplifier. The light amplifier are simply collections of atoms which have the three level structure or the four level structure. Ruby is a light amplifier. Helium neon mixture is a light amplifier. Neodymium YAG is a light amplifier. Titanium sapphire is a light amplifier. So lasers are, the nomenclature of lasers is such that they are named after the medium which lasers. For example, in a helium neon laser, the laser amplifier is a mixture of helium and neon. In a titanium sapphire laser, the lasing medium is titanium ions inside sapphire, ruby. We can have carbon dioxide lasers, nitrogen lasers, dye lasers. We can have <coughs> semiconducting lasers. And the list goes on and on. So laser is named after the active medium, which is lasing. ठीक है? अब lasing एक verb बन चुका है. Dictionary में भी लफ्ज़ आगे laser. Laser means to give laser action. So you have a cavity in which you place the light amplifier. It's also called the active medium. So photons that are emitted by stimulated emission, they travel inside the cavity. They travel inside the cavity, bounce off the walls. They're traveling inside the cavity, they bounce off the walls, off the mirrors, and increase the amplification. Because the photons are passing through the light amplification medium again and again. And of course you need a pump. So this is 